Hi, Mark Reedy here. In this video, I'm just going to go over the parts inventory for Tatums. Basically, show you how to add a part, how to search for a part, how to uh, select a, a markup for a part if you're charging more than what the part costs you, um, how to check in new inventory for a part, and, uh, and then how to basically see where the uh, parts have been installed. I'll show you the parts inventory report and the reminders pop-up screen for parts as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first of all, to add a new part, you're just gonna basically, um, you're gonna click on forms and then parts inventory. And then you're gonna click on add new part. And then here you're just gonna go ahead and give it a part number and you can give it a manufacturer part number if you want to or if it's different and you can give it a description and let's go ahead and spell that right and then we're going to, going to choose a type of part that it is and this list can be added to on the fly so if I wanted to just create a new type of part, typically this will come uh, from us with about four or five parts categories. So you could have like tires, um, electrical, and, and so forth. Or you can see this database, uh, base, they've added a lot of different categories. So um, let's just go ahead and choose this category here, oil filter. You can choose who the manufacturer is um, you can put a bin location, and the bin location um, can be added to on the fly. So this could be, it could be a, um, a can, you know, basically a parts uh, location in your part shop. It could be a secondary part shop, and we're just going to say, um, we'll just call it Rack 1, for example. And we're just going to say... Uh, uh, we'll just say position like A5 or something like that. All right, then we give it a parts cost. And so we're just gonna say $5 here and we can choose who the vendor is. And this can be added to on the fly. Um, you can just type something in there. If it's not in the list, it'll ask you if you wanna add it and you can just click okay to add it. And then here uh, we have the selling price and the selling price in this case is the same as the cost. If you wanted to increase the price, you could click here to fixed increase amount. So that could be, for example, it could be $10. So every part you add would be $10 higher than what it costs you. Or you could add a specific uh, percentage increase. So in this case, if you wanted to increase the price by 10%, it's gonna increase it by 10%. So you can see 50 cents was added to it there. Um, manual is uh, basically sell this uh, $5 part for $15, I could do that. That's just the manual override, so uh, whatever amount you want. Now that setting is made, um, you, you, have a you can have a default setting so that every time you add a new part, it'll automatically either have the manual or the fixed or the percentage and, um, and what the amount, if it's gonna be a fixed increase or a percentage increase, this amount over here can be automatically populated every time you add a new part. And then you would set that underneath file and then uh, my company information. And then you're going to see a section in there. I'll just go to that in a second. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, so track inventory for this part. This is if you want the part to show up when it, when it gets down to a specific uh, minimum quantity on hand before reorder. If you want that to show up on the reminder screen. So I'll go ahead and choose that. And if you want to inactivate the part, you can choose that here to inactivate it so that it does not show up on your drop-down list for when you're adding parts to work orders. You can also override that to show your inactive parts on the drop-down list when you're adding parts to work orders underneath tools and preferences, okay? So we're gonna say quantity on hand one here, and we can say uh, the date, the quantity on hand. Uh, I'll just put in today's date. And then uh, minimum quantity on hand before reorder, we're going to say one. And now what's going to happen is because we are down to one and we have a minimum quantity on hand before reorder, 
and we're tracking the parts inventory, this is going to show up on the reminder screen as needing to, needing to be reordered. All right. If I had already reordered this part, then I could put in here how many I've reordered and the date that it was reordered. That way I don't, that way when I open it up and look at the part, I can see that it's already been reordered. Once the order comes in, if I've made an order for some parts to come in, like say for example, I've, I've ordered five and uh, I reordered them today. Um, then once they came in, then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change that quantity on hand to, if I still had, if I had one when I opened up the uh, parts inventory screen, I got five more in. I'm just going to change the quantity on hand to six. All right. So it's just a manual check-in. There's no other check-in feature. There's no history of, uh, and there's no purchase order features in the parts inventory for Tatum's very simple, basic parts inventory. You're going to see what was installed when and where and how much it costs at the time of installation. So you'll be able to see how much you're spending on parts after they've been installed on a vehicle. So down below you're going to see all the places this part's been installed, uh, when it was installed, the work order it was installed on, how much it cost at the time of installation, your total costs or your installed cost down here uh, for that particular part and the quantity of that part that's been installed on one or more vehicles or equipment in your fleet. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and I'll show you uh, one in a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click on uh, update that. And so I've got that done. And now if I needed to change something on there, I would just click edit. And it asks me if I want to edit this. I'm going to say yes. And now say I want to just change the selling price to 10. And then I click update and that locks it back down again. All right, and then I can add a new part at that point. I could delete the part. If I delete the part, it's going to delete it from the work order that it was used on as well. It's not gonna be associated with that equipment anymore, so you're better off doing an inactive, setting it as inactive, so that if you don't want it to show up in the drop-down list, but you still want it to show up in the history of that equipment or uh, of your fleet, of where it was installed in your fleet. Searching for a part, so, so if I'm up here and I've got this open and I type in the, I type in test and I click search, you can see that comes up. Now, if I just wanted to see everything with the word T in it, I could do, or starting with the word T, the letter T, I should say, I could put T and then an asterisk and then click search. It's going to bring up everything that starts with the letter T. Now, if I wanted to see everything with the word break, somewhere in the part description or the part number rather we can do a, a double asterisk there and let's type in the word break uh, within the double asterisk so we have a wild card in the in the front a wild card uh, in the back and so basically any letters or any kind of text beforehand or after that, that has the word break within it uh, it's going to show up so we'll click that and we can see we've got uh, ABS brake sensor, we've got brake chamber, we've got brake clean, and so forth. So that's how the wild car works. And you can do the same thing if you're searching for any of these other fields in here as well. Uh, you can sort it by uh, various fields here. And you can display the inactives, the actives. Or if you want to just see the ones that need to be reordered, you can click there. And it's going to show you all the things that, are, that need to be reordered. Now I'm going to take the word break out of there so that we're not looking for only the break stuff. And now it's going to show us all the parts that need to be reordered currently. All right. And now if we go over to, and just close this real quick. Now we can see down below, I chose one uh, part here. It's showing where it was installed and when, how much it costs at the time of installation. We uh, installed two on there on that particular work order and then the total cost. All right. So... So that's how that works here. You can see one that has a part that was installed on uh, various pieces of equipment and different prices uh, on the cost per unit. You can also print this list out down here. If you click this print button, uh, you'll see the print preview and it's gonna show you uh, everything in that list, uh, the total quantity and so forth. Also, you can use these buttons up here to sort by these columns. Okay, and so let me close that, and then we're going to go over to the uh, My Company Information. I'll just show you where you can set the default mark 
uh, inventory markup method right here. So if I chose fixed and 10, then it's gonna mark everything up by $10. If I chose percentage and 10, it's gonna mark everything up by 10%. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna change it back to manual and then basically it'll just, whatever uh, is, it's gonna be the same exact thing on the, both the uh, selling price and on the cost and then you can override it and it'll say, stay as manual. Now remember, each part can be overridden by going in and choosing uh, how you want it to be marked up, but this will be the default when you add a new part. All right, so um, let me ch go up here to the reminders pop-up and you'll see here on the parts inventory tab up here on the top right here, uh, we can see all of the parts that are needing to be reordered. And so if I uh, scroll through here. Okay, I stopped the video for a second there. I forgot that I had changed the quantity on hand on this part to six. So I'll change that back to one. Let me edit that, click on edit, and then change that to one, and then click close. And now we're gonna go back over to our reminders. And we'll look at the parts inventory. And I'll just sort by the part number. And if we're down here, we can see the test one, two, three, four is listed in there. Quantity on hand one, minimum quantity on hand before reorder one. So, and then it says to a quantity on reorder is five. So remember I had filled that in as well. All right, and so, um, and you can also print this list out here. If you click on that print button, it's gonna show you a print preview. And then you can print that out and you can also uh, sort it by a field, like for example, uh, I had the part number field sorted, but if I wanted to sort it by the quantity on hand field, say from zeros to ones, uh, and then I click the print button, it's gonna sort it by that. That field first, see the quantity on hand? All right, so if I wanted to sort it by the quantity on reorder, and put those, at the, so show the zeros there. And there, and so now we can see the quantity on reorder, the zeros are at the top, and then we can go down to the ones and the twos and so forth. Um, you, know, you don't see a date reorder, but that would be show, that would show up there if you had actually entered in the date of reorder like I did down here. All right. Okay, so the final thing on parts inventory I wanted to show you was uh, regarding work order. So two things work orders and parts for this equipment. Parts for this equipment do not pull from the parts inventory. You can only pull from parts inventory by using work orders, all right? Parts for this equipment can be used to enter in um, commonly used parts, or if you just wanna have quick and dirty way to keep track of all the parts ever installed, you can do that. You can copy over your work order parts to the parts for this equipment if you want to, and there's a little bit of information about that in the work orders video. So let me go over to work orders and we'll just open up a work order here. We'll go up here to parts, materials used, click on add part. And here's where you're gonna add a part from the inventory. So from here, you can type it in. If it doesn't exist, uh, I'm gonna go test one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do add, add a new part here on the fly hit tab, click OK, enter in a description, give it a cost, give it a selling price, and that's all I can do there. I can't um, edit or add any more fields from doing it on the fly. That's just a quick way to get a part into the inventory so that it can be used in a work order. All right, so you can also double click on this drop down here and that'll bring up the parts inventory screen. So if I wanted to go in and edit that part that I just added and give it more detail, I could do that here. So I go one, two, excuse me, test. And there's the one I just added. So if I wanted to add more information to this, I could do that here. I click edit and then I could type in uh, the quantity on hand and so forth. All right, and we'll just go ahead and uh, click on update. And then we'll close that. 
And then down here, um, I can click on deduct part from inventory and then it will deduct that from the inventory uh, after I've chosen a quantity. So if I chose two here, choose deduct from inventory, and you can see five on hand before and three on hand after. The other thing I can do is if I uncheck that, it puts the quantity on hand back into inventory. Um, I can also search the inventory from here if I want to search by more fields rather than just doing the drop down, which is just the part number. So if I wanted to search by a description, I could do that here. And I can do it the same way as I showed you earlier. If I wanted to search for break, for example, I could do that. And then if I double click on that, it'll add that part to the work order. Also from here, I can click on the parts inventory screen. If I double click or if I single click on this button down here, that'll open up the parts inventory screen as well. And, uh, and then I can add or edit or find parts uh, activate, deactivate parts from there as well. And uh, then we can also sort by these buttons at the top uh, for sorting those columns. So if I double click this brake fluid one, uh, that puts the brake fluid in there, puts the description in, the quantity and so, or not the quantity, but the, uh, the price and so forth. And then I can deduct it. And you can see here it's got a negative two because there was nothing on hand to begin with. All right, so basically that's how you're going to uh, deal with uh, parts inventory uh, when you're adding parts to a work order. One other thing real quick is the uh, reporting. So if we go over here to uh, reports, more reports, we can scroll down here and change report type to parts inventory. We only have one uh, parts inventory report in here. And so here you can choose to look at specific part numbers or ranges of part numbers, specific inventory types, descriptions, vendors, or date of quantity verified from and to. I'll just leave that all that blank for now. And then here I can choose to exclude certain types of parts from the report. So I can choose multiple types if I want to exclude them from the report. Um, and then down here I can display inactive part types. So this report, this uh, list here is not showing the part types that are currently inactive. But if I wanted to, I could click that, we refresh the list and show all the inactive part types as well. And then I can choose to exclude those part types. Also, if I choose this uh, checkbox here, it'll display the inactive part types on the report as well. So if I don't choose that, then the inact and if I just continue and, and show all the part types, don't don't exclude anything. I just click continue here, then it's going to dis it's not going to display the inactive part types in the report that follows. Now in the report that follows, it's showing a, all inventory items that are in your inventory whether there's a quantity on hand or not. All right. Uh, we do plan on adding another uh, report or possibly option to this one to exclude um, exclude items where the quantity on hand is uh, less than one, right? Um, in the meantime, though, we do have a, a spreadsheet. If we go over here to tatums.com slash spreadsheets, We've got a few reports that will show you, well, that allow you to filter out the items where there is nothing, no quantity on hand. All right, so recent one here is number 113. It's a parts inventory only quantity on hand with the cost and with, the, uh, with an empty actual column for taking inventory. So uh, you need Excel and you can link these up to your Tatum's data file. And, and it will show you the actual here. So this actual will just be in a blank field, blank column, where if you are actually taking a physical inventory and you see the quantity on hand says one, for example, and you could move this around. If I wanted to cut this and put this over here, I could do that. And if I wanted to uh, move, move the cost, I could do that. But anyway, so you can put the quantity on hand, the actual quantity on hand. So if it says the quantity on hand was one in Tatum's, but you found out it was actually two, and you could change that there. And that would allow you to go in and 
and uh, get an actual count as compared to what Tatum's is saying if you want to verify. All right, so hopefully that's helpful for you, and thanks for watching. Have a good one. Take care.